Good morning, everyone. My name is Selena Cordova L, and I just wanted to welcome everyone this morning to do some uh, yoga with me. Um, I started a little melanin active, yoga, melanin active yoga DVD about two years ago now. And um, basically, it was after I had my son. I wanted to get back into yoga, uh, my daily practice, and I hope to have been able to inspire people to do the same. Um, if you're suffering from injuries or have had any type of hip or knee injuries, yoga is a great way to strengthen your body again and to really empower yourself to work through a lot of arthritis and a lot of osteoporosis and other conditions that can really prevent us from feeling good. So um, because I have had open knee surgery on both of my knees, um, what I've noticed in doing yoga and in watching other people do yoga, it's very good and inspiring for me to see people go to their extent and to as far as they can go. But it can be disheartening for those that have injuries like us to uh, feel like we can make it, to feel like we can actually break through a lot of our own pain. So um, I'm an example, you know, I, I don't have a huge, um, no gymnastics background. Stretching is, is definitely something that you get better at as you continue to do it. So even though I've wanted to use the last couple of months to uh, gain muscle and to really like um, just strengthen my core and strengthen my body in ways to empower me through yoga, um, two and a half years later, what I've noticed, especially with the comments that I get and people that ask questions, sometimes I wish I can be more physically present for people. And I can't, you know, I'm in Miami. A lot of people that I'll follow are in New York and Atlanta and North Carolina. And uh, I love you guys. I wish I could be physically there to teach classes and to connect with each person. But this is what's great about social media. What I decided to do, instead of feeling like I don't have um, the right camera positioning and all this, just to wake up in the morning and what I do for myself in the morning, I can offer other people. Um, and that's, that's what I want to start to be able to do more. Sometimes I think a little selfishly in the sense that yoga's been such a practice of my own and something that I do first thing in the morning, you know, I don't feel really to talk all the time, but the time is now. And uh, I would love to be able to, for five, seven dollars, just teach people. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start setting up weekly classes and weekly things that people can look at and hopefully um, incorporate in their home practices. So in the morning, I, uh, if you can't do it in the morning, try to make it in the afternoon or in the evening. But I especially like doing yoga in the morning because my stomach doesn't have any food in it. My digestive issues from the night before I've cleared up. And um, I start off in a different space every day depending on how I feel. So today we're going to start off with what can warm our bodies up right away. A couple of downward facing dogs. If you have, um, not downward facing dogs, morning salutations, I'm sorry. If you have five pound weights, it's great to try to keep them by your side because it's really cool to incorporate them and a lot of your movements. Um, so yeah, when you wake up in the morning, you're pretty groggy, a great way you're uh, in your bed, just lift your arms up and start to breathe. So we lift our arms up and give thanks, but what you're doing is you're opening your shoulders and you're dropping <clears throat> your neck muscles so that you can actually start to breathe and feel the air throughout your arms. So if you want, you can leave your feet straight in front of you or sit in lotus style. Lotus style is, of course, you know, the yogis, the way yogis sit. Um, it's very tight on my kneecap still to sit like this, so modify it. And that's kind of what I wanted to show. Um, when we see a lot of people doing yoga, especially master teachers, they're extremely flexible and have great dexterity around their, their patellas. I'm not there yet. I'm still working through a lot of uh, issues around my knee. So for instance, when people sit back like this, they usually can touch their heels to their um, bum. It's still very painful for me to do and to sit like this, even though I have some flexibility in my hips, it still really hurts to sit like this. So I modify everything. Just drop your legs out in front, lift your arms, and exhale to the right and to the left. You'll feel a nice pull all the way down the right side of your body and the left side of your body. You can bring your feet into a frog-like position and just take a couple of neck rolls to the left and to the right.
after I do that, on your hands and knees, we do a couple of cat stretches to wake up your spine in the morning. So you inhale straight up. And exhale out, lifting your chin to the chin to the sky. Draw it back in, inhaling your ribs and your belly button into your core and into your spine. through each vertebrae, almost like an accordion, and lift straight back up. We're going to take this into a couple of sun salutations or morning stretches. This is a great way to wake up your hamstrings and your hip sockets as well as your back and your arms. Inhale straight down, exhale your hips up, pull straight back. Inhale your right foot forward. You want to lift your arms straight up. Start to feel the stretch in your left quadricep as well as your psoas muscles. Hold it here for 10 seconds, keeping your arms extended straight up. You want to see if you can pass your ears so you can start to rotate and open your shoulders. Exhale your arms straight down, place them by your sides. Bring your right foot back to meet your left. And hike your booty up as high as it can go with keeping your rib cage pulled in and your arms extended straight back. Do the same thing on the left. Step your left foot straight forward. Extend your right leg and lift up your arms. As you exhale, relax into the pose and into the position. As you inhale, recalibrate your body, drop your shoulders, hold it here for five more seconds, keeping your back leg extended, drop your hands, and bring your leg straight back. We're gonna do that again. Right leg forward, arms lifted. Sit further into your hips if you can. Bring your arms straight out by your side. Drop them to the floor. Left leg back, straight back. And your other leg forward. Sit into your hips as far as you can go. Extend your right leg, trying to lock out your kneecap. Straight back. So as you lift your arms, after you do about five just basic ones, you're going to lift your arms, keep your legs a little bit apart, just so you can start to open your hips and keep them open. A lot of positions start with your legs closed, but what I've noticed is when I open my legs, my hips have the chance to relax, and I'm not using my hip sockets as much. So you want to also think of going around the world in a sense that when you stretch your body, in all positions, forward, side, back, and side, you'll start to open up all the chambers. So a very good warm up for me some days that I don't feel like being so structured is just taking my hips and rolling them around. It's an excellent way to get started. For those that are inspired by music, you can play a little reggaeton 
Play a little music and get into your hips. Get into your hips. Keep your knees bent and get into your hips. Because what you're doing now is you're literally engaging your lower body in all shapes and sizes. So you want to roll to the right and take it twice and roll to the left. Once you're here, now you can extend straight up and take it to the right. Keep your shoulders dropped as you extend. This is my basic warm up because what it does is it opens me up for the day. All my left side is open and relaxed. I'm keeping my shoulders pulled back to trigger my rotator cuffs, to drop my traps, and to use my belly to stay here. My left foot is plugged into the floor. I use that to push in and literally lift up. So you do the same thing on the right side. Lift straight up, keep your shoulders down, and just go straight over. Hold it here for about 30 seconds if you can. And lift straight up. So from the side, you can bring your feet together because what it allows you to do is to push your hips forward. You wanna push your hips all the way forward, lift up out of your rib cage, extend your arms straight up, and head to the back. Push your hips all the way forward so that you can relax your upper body. Keep your knees locked out. On the exhale, relax. Drop your hands to the floor. When you hear a great way to engage the core is to do 10 pump breaths. It cleans out your lungs, it engages your endocrine system, and you're able to expel a lot of old oxygen and fill your body up with new. So you're here, you just did a back bend. You're gonna place your arms by the sides. If you can't touch the floor, Stay where you can. Even if you're here and you have to bend your knees, bend your knees to make contact with the floor so that your nose and your knees can meet each other and greet each other. All right, so we're gonna start here. Inhale and exhale straight down. Two, straight down. Three, Four. With each one, I'm contracting my abs and greeting and kissing my knees to my forehead. Five. Four. As I inhale, I try to elongate my back and my lower vertebrae. And as I exhale, I collapse my front of my ribs and draw my knees into my nose. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. This last one I'm going to hold and try to go to my furthest extent just in this position to elongate and allow my spine to realign itself. I'm gonna go ahead and step on my heels so that I can get a further stretch up my hamstrings. You don't have to do it like this. You can keep your hands straight here, keep your knees bent forward, and just make contact for 60 seconds. I'm gonna go a little further and grab onto the backs of my ankles. And grabbing onto my ankles, I can use my own body as a buoy to target myself.